What's up, what's up, you guys? It is 1 or 2 in the morning. Hey, Siri, what time is it right now? It's 2.04 a.m. 2.04 a.m. I just came from the gym, and um, I just, I've just i been meaning to make this video. I've been really busy, y'all, but um, shout out to everybody that's been watching the video. Make sure y'all subscribe, please. Get me, I, I need to get to like, you know, 10,000 subscribers ASAP, so please share my videos. But I want to talk about what it's like uh, driving for Lyft. I recently started driving for Lyft. As you guys know, um, I work in the entertainment industry, and it's been really hard because of the writer's strike and the WG, the WGA writer's strike and also the actor's strike. And um, I work on a lot of different movie and television sets, and I work on scripted programming. So pretty much almost all scripted programming um, was put on hold like back in like May. So a lot of us haven't really been working. A lot of us in the industry we had kind of already been told that the strike was pretty much going to happen. So um, everybody has just been kind of like trying to figure stuff out to do. So I started driving for Lyft and I just want to give you the pros and the many cons of driving for Lyft. And um, <laughs> it's been mind boggling. And um, like I told you guys, it's two something in the morning. I've been trying to make this video, but I just got home from the gym. I took a shower. And I was like, you know, before I go to sleep, I need to go ahead and knock this video out. And, um, yeah, I'm going to show y'all. And This is going to be the most honest, authentic video when it comes to if you've been curious about driving for Lyft or Uber. Um, especially, like, I know the economy is in a real crappy place. And you might just be wanting to make some extra money. Um, look at this video. Um, I'm going to give you my detailed opinion. So let me just give you some backstory. So maybe like, I want to say like four or five years ago, pre-pandemic, um, I had just left my corporate temp job and um, I was trying to find another job. I was going on interview after interview. I wasn't really working in the entertainment industry like that. And I was kind of struggling. And... Um, my friend at the time, a uh, homie, he told me like, man, why don't you just, you know, do Lyft or something? And I was just like, man, I would never do Lyft or Uber. And I'll be honest with y'all, you know, I keep it transparent. It was 100% because I had too much pride. I was so prideful that somebody was going to see me driving Lyft and, um, you know, I would feel ashamed or embarrassed about it. So, like I said, back then, I was really looking for a job, was waiting for these different um, opportunities to come through. And I finally said, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work for Lyft. I downloaded the Lyft driver app, was doing the, the, the process. And again, my pride got in the way. And I was just like, yeah, I can't do it. So I just never did it. Fast forward to this year, um, I had wrapped up on a movie and a television show. And then I was actually in the process of selling a movie that I wrote. Um, a pretty big network um, was interested in a script I had wrote. And we were literally almost in the last stages of finalizing everything for the deal to be done. I was about to like sell a movie, a script for the first time. I was about to get a nice check. Um, I was excited. The situations with the strike started coming up and I just, I, I kind of had a bad feeling. I was like, man, I hope, you know, this doesn't delay the deal. And as my luck would have it, they put everything on pause and stopped the deal because of the strikes. And then like probably a week or two later, that's when the WGA officially went on strike. So anyway, I then started hitting up 
all the different production companies I knew. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm free. You know, is any set work for me? You know, I could do script supervising, wardrobe, props, art department. You know, I'm hitting everybody up. Everybody who I normally work with, the production companies and the producers who normally hire me, they were all like, yeah, we not we not really working right now, you know. Um, they shut the productions down, this, this, that. And I was just like, screw it. Damn. So then I said, well, okay, I'll jump back into corporate because as as along with me having an extensive entertainment career, I, I've worked in corporate a long time too. And normally, I used to get hit up maybe like two to five times a week on my LinkedIn from different recruiters because I have... Um, a background in, you know, client specialists, logistics, supply chains, tech. You know, I have a great background. So I started applying to like regular corporate jobs because I said, okay, I don't know how long this strike is going to last, you know. And like I said, I'm always about money coming in. So I went ahead and started applying for like corporate jobs. Um, I got rehired from the federal government for a contract position um, that's in another video I have coming up about working for the government. <clears throat> and they messed, the, the people who were onboarding me messed up my paperwork. So this is going on like, maybe like almost two months. I had not worked. I had a little money saved, but it wasn't enough. You know what I mean? And I was like, man, I need some, I need some bread coming in. I started chopping it up with somebody who I know in LA who works in the business and this is somebody who works on a lot of projects they tell me that you know when things get slow for them or between projects they do Lyft and Uber so I was like really and they and the person was like yeah a lot of people you know in the entertainment industry out here drive Lyft or do DoorDash or you know Uber Eats in between projects because you know the thing about when you work in the entertainment you have to jump from project to project. You just got to keep kind of like jumping. So there's no guarantee you're going to get a project like right after you wrap on something. So it might be a day you're unemployed. It might be a week. It might be a month. It might be six months. You just don't know. So you just kind of have to keep jumping from movie to movie, television series to television series. So... I thought about it, and again, my pride was just like, man, I can't see my, I can't see myself driving for Lyft, man. I can't see myself driving for Lyft. I don't have the patience now, and I have a brand new car. I have a 2022. I have a brand new car, and I was like, and, and I got a nice ass car. Nah, nah, I ain't gonna do it. Let me tell you what was the final decision for me, going ahead and saying I'm gonna drive for Lyft. My car insurance gets taken out um, biannually, so that's twice a year. So for six months, um, I don't have monthly payments they take out. Every six months, they take out a payment. I have forgot that my car insurance was coming up. I wake up and I check my account. I see like $1,200, $1,300 gone. So I look, it's my insurance company. So I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, yo... I wasn't trying to have, I just paid my mortgage, some other bills, and then now this, and I'm like, yo, I haven't worked in like two months, I gotta work. So before I start going into the pros, if this is gonna be a long video, I'm gonna try to use all 30 minutes of this. So if you need to pause this right here, go get a snack, come back. I'm about to go fully in on how to start driving for Lyft, the pros and the many cons, and I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. I'm even gonna show you how much I made in my um in my most uh lucrative week i'm gonna pull it up on my app okay so like i said pause get you a snack remember to like comment and subscribe and share share this please y'all i'm really like i've been cranking out videos for y'all give me some credit i'm damn there filming at hey siri what time is it now it's 2 14 a.m i'm filming at 2 14 a.m for y'all okay okay so when I noticed that, I said, okay, well, I'm, you know, when, um, <laughs> that meme of Jamie Foxx and Denzel Washington, where he's like, I'm leaving here with some, I was like, this car going to work for some, because if my car insurance them got taken out and I'm already not in the best financial place, I need to start making some kind of moves. 
So when I went to um, download the Lyft app, like I said, I had already had the Lyft driver app, but I had just never finished the, the application. So I went, after you download the Lyft driver app, they're going to want to see, you have to upload a picture of your license. You're going to have to upload a picture of your driver's registration. You're going to have to uh, upload a picture of your, your tag. You're going to have to upload um, your car insurance. Um, not your car, yeah, yeah, your car insurance. So license, tag, driver's registration, and car insurance. Those four things you have to upload first, okay? Then they have to do a, a background check for you. They had told me, I think, on the on the app, they was like the background check could take up to like I think two weeks. Honestly, my background check came back within like I honestly said I want to say within like two or three days. Like within like two or three days, they came back and they was like, yeah, you could you could start driving. Um, you clear. Now, I'm going to quickly tell y'all about my first day. So even after I had got approved to drive my pride, man, I still was like, man, I can't, I can't drive, man. I can't do lift. Nah, man. What if somebody see me? I'm like, nah, man. I, I, I no, 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 no. I can't do it. So finally I just said, screw it, man. I was actually at the gas station, putting some gas in my car. And I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go ahead and try it. So I, I pull up the app. And Lyft the whole time was sending me messages. Like for the whole week, I was approved and I wasn't driving. Lyft kept sending me messages like, hey, you're approved to drive. You can start driving. Hey, um, you know, jump on this. Hey, we need drivers in your area. And I was just ignoring all that stuff because I was like, man, I don't, I, 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 I can't do it, bro. I was like, I don't know, man. Anyway. Let me first, this is where I'm going to start talking about the pros of driving for Lyft. Okay. Um, I'm not editing this. This is going to be a straight upload. I have a list. I have my pros and my, 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 my cons down here. Okay. Uh, the one pro about driving for Lyft, pro number one, is quick, fast money. If you um, have a decent car, you have your license, you have car insurance and registration, and you don't have a crazy driving record, you can start driving for Lyft pretty quickly. And Lyft also has um, a, a same-day payout. So you could set up your pay so that, like, after you finish doing as much driving as you want, you can get paid that day. Money will go directly into your account. Or you can set it up that you could get a one-week um, one time a week payment where you just kind of like let all your money build up and then you could just get paid on like Tuesdays. If you do the same day payouts, um, it's 85. They're going to charge you 85 cents to send the money or you could get the lift, um, card. They, they continue to, where all your funds can go and it's free of charge. I don't have time for that. Just put the money in my account. So it's a quick, fast way to get money. Number two, it's flexible. Driving for Lyft is like very flexible. Um, like I said, it's been times like you see how it's two something in the morning now. It's been times where, like you know, I'm at the crib. I'm not doing nothing. I can't sleep. You know, nothing really good to look at. You know, I ain't laying up with nothing, and I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna just go get up and drive. So I'll just go in my car, turn the app on, and then you know, start doing rides. So it's very flexible. You could work. As early as you want, as late, you create your own schedule. You truly do. Okay. Number three, I would say it's the bonuses. Lyft, uh, every couple of weeks or so, they might have like bonuses in the sense that they might tell you, okay, if you, excuse me, it is two in the morning. If you Accept the next three rides in a row. We're going to send you an extra $20 on top of it. Um, if you um, go to this particular area, you could get this. Or if it's like a, 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 a bonus zone, if you drive in certain areas, for every ride you get, they might add on anything from a dollar extra, $2 extra, $3 extra, $5. It just depends. Um, it's, that's not an everyday thing. It really just depends on, um, you know, what they have going on. Uh, so that's quick, fast money, flexibility, 
bonuses at times. And then the last pro for driving for Lyft would be you meet some good people. Um, yeah. Uh, you just have sometimes you have some great conversations in the car. I've been able, I've, I have a nicer car. So, um, sometimes, uh, you know, people who want like a preferred ride, I'll pick them up and, um, I've, I've had some celebrities in my car. I've had, you know, big government people. It just depends. So you meet some good people, have good conversation. You can network. You know, I've met some really amazing people. Okay. So those, uh, that's my four pros for driving to, for Lyft. And I'm going to be real with you. I got way more cons. All right. Con, uh, number one, um, Driving for Lyft and Uber, it's a very dangerous job. And I don't think a lot of people even like factor that in. And I didn't and, and until I started driving for Lyft for these last couple of weeks, you know, two months or whatever. Um I do have a regular job um while this strike is going on, but then I am just in grime mode right now. So I like I work my, my regular job and then I um I drive for Lyft when I get off. But when I tell you, Lyft to me is a job that if you are not a street smart person and you don't have discernment, you don't need to be driving Lyft because you do not know who is getting in your car. I know Lyft um, does their best to try to like vet people out the best they can. But as speaking as a driver, half of the time you go to pick somebody up, the person that's on the app is not the person you're picking up. You'll see Lisa, you know, you have a pickup for Lisa. You drive to Lisa's house. It's three dudes getting in the car. And then you like, uh, what's the name of the account? And somebody's like, oh, that's my girl. Oh, that's my cousin. Oh, that's, you know, my friend. Uh, people send rides for people. People, you know, use people's accounts. Sometimes people, um, I I've recently found out that people are scamming up people's Lyft account for rides. All types of crazy stuff. So it's very dangerous. Um, I have, I'm not going to say too much, but I have seen, and by the grace of God, you know, Jesus, he's poured his blood on me. I haven't had nothing too crazy happen, but almost every illegal activity you could probably think of for the most part, I have kind of been privy to in my car in the sense that like people tend to handle business using you know those types of um services and i always tell folks like hey yo i ain't see nothing i hear nothing like handle your biz like look let me just drop you you know what i mean i don't get involved but lift is very dangerous i've seen people have Dracos, full out guns, you know, in the car with me. Um, I'm, I personally am not a snitch, so I'm not running like, oh my gosh, like this person has a gun. I'm just like, uh, ayo, bro, can you put that up? And, you know, most of the time people are cool. They're like, okay, yeah, my bad, bro. Da -da 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 -da. So, uh, yeah, it's very dangerous. And not to sound sexist, but I definitely feel like, Women, I feel like you shouldn't be doing Lyft or Uber if it's not in the daytime and in like real good areas because I am a guy, number one, and then I'm also like, I'm not a small guy. Um, so I feel like not too much people f like come at me crazy, but I could just imagine for a woman what she might go through. So just on a people level, you don't know who's coming in your car. And a lot of times, like, Lyft will have you picking people up from all different type of life situations. Like, where I live, I don't live that far from a jail. I'll be picking up hella people from the, the county jail. I'm talking about people who just got out of jail. Like, one cat was telling me he had just got off of, like, aggravated assault. And yet, this mofo is in the back of my, you know, is in my back seat. So, that's what you deal with. Now, 
If you are somebody with a weak immune system, this is another dangerous part. I don't suggest you drive Lyft because Lyft also have has you picking up a lot of sick people. And when I mean sick people, people will come in your car sick as hell, coughing, sneezing. Um, you Sometimes you have to pick up a lot of people from the hospital. You got people who just, like one lady had just got discharged from having some crazy virus and she's in my car now. You know what I mean? Um, you got people who are coming off of planes from foreign countries and now they're in your car and they're coughing. And then like I always wear my mask, but still you're in a car, you're in this enclosed space. So like, yeah, if you are somebody who's who gets sick easily and you, you know, you have a weak immune system, I wouldn't suggest you drive for lift because um you could pretty much get sick um um because of that. Another dangerous part about um Lyft is that the app tends to like send you in a lot of bad areas. <laughs> I can, like if you live in Atlanta, um you know that there's Atlanta, which is like Fulton County, but then there's a lot of other places in Georgia that has the city of Atlanta, but it's not the city of Atlanta. Their city is Atlanta, so like it's an Atlanta and College Park, which on the south side, there's an Atlanta in Cobb County. There's an Atlanta like different parts. So sometimes when you see the address come up, you don't really know where you're going to. Man, Liv has already a couple of times sent me to the straight hood i'm talking about as i'm pulling it up in my new car driving past hella people you know trapping and they looking at me and i'm like oh crap i remember i picked up this lady from the hood and she's like oh my gosh thank you so much and then she's like um 10 other drivers canceled on me you know what i mean because Lyft will just send you wherever there's a request. And I like I don't I don't know. Like I'm kind of back and forth on if like certain bad areas shouldn't be serviced. Because like I said, if you got me going down a one-way street and it's about 40, 50 niggas outside, ooh, I, I shouldn't be saying that word because I want a lot of people to view this video. Um, sorry. Um, and you don't necessarily like know the area. You could get robbed, you could get carjacked, and like Lyft just kind of like sends you out there. You feel what I'm saying? To pick up people. So that's another dangerous part. And then sometimes the app is totally incorrect. That's another thing about um the Lyft app. The Lyft app is not a hundred percent foolproof. Like I would say the app is about 90% right. Because there's several times the app has put carried me on dirt roads, carried me in the middle of like uh, some some abandoned street. It's crazy. So um, that's another dangerous part about it. And then also the, the another dangerous aspect is is the more you're driving, the more you're susceptible to like accidents. The more you're on the road, the more you're driving. Um, I have not had a ticket in years. No traffic ticket. Nothing. Since I started driving Lyft, I got a I got a ticket. Um, so, yeah, that's some cons under the dangerous umbrella. Another con that a lot of people don't know about is that you do more than driving with Lyft. Um, you are going. You not just gonna be sitting in your car the whole time. You are gonna have to like help people um load their the car up um a lot of old people shopping for groceries disabled people shopping for groceries you're gonna have single mothers who got like like the other day i had a girl she had a baby that was maybe like three years old then she had a baby on her hip like a, a little baby then she was pregnant and she had a whole cart full of groceries with no help so of course i had to stop what i was doing help load the groceries, help her put the car seats in the car. Um, you're going to have people with wheelchairs. You're going to have to help get them situation. You're going to have people, you know, with walkers. Um, I've had um, this one guy, he had a really bad stroke and half of his body was like frozen. 
And, you know, he was, he had a cane and he was kind of walking towards me and he couldn't like turn his body. So he actually asked me like, Hey, I need you to like, essentially like push me in the car. And I was on kind of uncomfortable. And he's like, look, bro, I can't feel this side of my body. Just like push me in the car. So I had to come out and push him in the car. So you do more than drive. You're going to have to sometimes help a lot of people like utilize, um, you know, the different, your trunk, you know, and help them get in the car. So you're not just driving the whole time. Uh, let me hurry up. I got like f four more minutes. Um, you will learn to start hating people because Liv will show you. And if you've worked in customer service, if you have worked, you know, in server or bartender or anything, it's the same thing. Lyft is the same thing. Um, you deal with all types of attitude. People come into your car talking to you crazy they have a bad day so they yelling at you because they don't want the music on or it's too cold it's too hot da -da 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 -da. i'm dry faster it's crazy i've had to put people out my car before it's wild so you learn to hate people because of how some people will come in your car thinking they could just talk to you crazy um people don't respect your property that's another thing about driving for Lyft. Like, like I said, I have a nice newer car. People will come, you know, chicks with weaves and long hair. Like, you know, people will be doing their hair and their makeup in your car. Leave your car dirty. People with badass kids have, like, I've had people have their kids, like, walking on the seat. And I have to turn around, like, yo, he can't do that. Or people leave your car, leave trash in your car. It's this one girl. It was a one Latina chick. Um, she had on like some kind of like bra or uh, her cleavage was out, and she put you know the seatbelt on. I don't know what kind of body makeup she had. I had a stain on my back seat seatbelt for weeks, and I kept scrubbing it, and it would not come out. Um, so yeah, people just will just try to come in your car eating, and then it's a whole. When you tell them they can't eat, they want to get in an argument with you. They don't respect your property, okay? Um, one thing I really hate about the Lyft um, app is that the rates and the rides are not consistent. So on Monday, I could drop you from point A to B, and it'll be $5. On Tuesday, I could do the same ride. It could be $8.00. And on Wednesday, I could do the same ride, and it could be $3. Every day, different times of day, the lift, um, the ride rate changes and all that stuff. And I'm not a fan of that because it messes up with your money. So you can't have a consistent day because it's never the same. Um, wear and tear in your car. The more you're driving, the more you know you put in all the miles on your car. Um, yeah, it sucks. And people now, I'm trying to wrap this up. People have started to like finesse drivers. People will promise you all kind of stuff and say they're going to tip you if you wait a little longer. They don't tip you. People will physically touch you. If you, you know, I'm a handsome guy. A lot of people hit on me. I've had people like grab me and touch me. I hate that shit. And then um, sometimes you go like hours with no rides. So. It's a lot more cons, but like I said, lift is something if you just need to kind of do it, do it, and then like kind of be out. I don't think it's a career change or nothing like that, but anyway, if y'all got any more questions, leave them down below. Like, comment, subscribe. I think my camera's about to cut up, so I'm wrapping it up. All right, that's the pros and cons of driving for lift. Peace, y'all. <laughs>